Morning gardeners and homesteaders, welcome to my homestead. I'm so glad you're here to join me. And I got to talk about something today that's just really, this is the time of year to really get on top of it. It's the worst pest you can imagine. It's the mammal, most destructive that we can have. And there's certain things that we do around here to help with that. We're gonna definitely talk about the greenhouse and also the garden, outside garden. In general, all these things will help you with your pest, potential pest issues this year. We really get going on this is, I went away for the weekend and I came back and it's, we've got a treat for this now. So this is the cabbage worm. So we'll treat for this tonight. I'm gonna to spray some BT on basically the whole garden. Mostly everything I have planted can be affected by the cabbage worm. So we're just gonna go through and just treat everything and take care of it hopefully, or start the process. Now that it's in the garden, we'll have to do a couple treatments, but that's what we're got on top for today. Now the biggest issue I have is with this bad boy right here, the greenhouse. And I mean, here's the deal. You may not have had any kind of issues with your greenhouse or the rest of your garden, but there is going to be a time when these mammals are going to look for refuge and they're going to look for food. And there's a reason why fall is the worst possible time for this. So what happens is the, and as the temperature cools, the animals need more food, right? And we have a lot of problems with our chickens because this is the time of year when they're really hunkering down for the winter and they're getting ready for it. So they need to build up their food stores. And then the other issue is they're gonna look for warmth. Now, we do provide places of warmth within our garden and obviously the greenhouse provides warmth, but even out in your garden, your mulch can be warmth. Your soil in general is gonna be warmer than up here where we're sitting. So all of these things add to it. So between shelter and food, this is what really drives them. And then depending on where you live, the water. So we have water in our gardens naturally, we have to have it. And this is the three things that these animals need for life. And when we come to think of it, there's, you know, you can't eliminate all of it, but what we can do is take steps to protect it. Last year, I had a possum get in my greenhouse and I'll link the video at the end if you guys want a good laugh. But this is what we put up last year. So the possum came in through this because it opens up during the day. And I'm fairly certain what he did is he climbed up, came in because everything that was on the shelf was on the ground. So it looked like he came in, dropped down, and then kind of camped out right under here for probably a couple days before I noticed it. So we put up this. Now this is plastic. And the only reason why I put plastic up here was because I didn't think that they're really gonna have a lot of time to chew. So they would come in and put their face on it and be like, oh wait, that's not gonna work out well, and then go away. Now this obviously has to be cut so that they can get through, or so that this arm can open and they can get through here. But in general, there is a lot of area in here that's gonna be blocked. So that worked out great. Well, this year we made another addition to the greenhouse and I immediately knew that this was even gonna be a better spot for them to come in. So we made the, we got this louver window and it's pretty neat, I like it. You shut it and it doesn't let the air in. Well, it'll let a little bit in and we'll talk about that later. But then we open it and obviously the air comes in, creates more ventilation so that we don't get as hot in here. But on the outside, it's just straight up open. Like anything can come in there. Talking to a man who just spent the better part of three days getting a rat out of his shed that built it, you know, try to make a home in there and have babies and we caught it before that. So I knew at that point, as I'm fighting this rat in my shed, I knew that if I got him to come out, which he won't be bothering anybody anymore if you know what I'm saying. But if he did come out, guess where the first place he's gonna run? Right through that window. It's a direct line all the way there. So I went and got some metal hardware cloth and we made a little simple box. And it's pretty effective. I mean, obviously, you know, something can't just push right through which should turn, but they can't chew through it, which is gonna be another issue. So all we did is we folded the corners over and measured it, all that stuff. And the only tricky part is gonna be right here. You have to cut it before you can make that fold. Now you can see here that it's not perfect and we do need to adjust it a little bit more. And I do need to figure it out. But for the most part, 
it definitely deters animals from coming in. If it wants to climb up here and get in, then you know what, you've earned your spot. You can't do but so much, you know what I mean? And the other thing too is if you don't need to have the door open, just keep the door closed. It's that simple. So this is how we eliminate our pests in the greenhouse. But when it comes to the rest of the garden, you can't do that. If you're watching this video, clearly you've either had a pest, a mammal of some sort get into your garden and destroy it, or you're worried about it. But if you've had it happen, what have you done to try and get rid of them? Let us know in the comments below because I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, it may not be what necessarily works, but what doesn't work that helps the most people. And just let us know because I wanna know what other people are doing too, because I know you guys have other kinds of pests than we do. And there's some crazy ones out there. So let us know in the comments below. Look at this thing, it's wide open. What am I gonna put, metal cages around it? Am I gonna put you know anything that is soft they can chew through? Typical culprits are gonna be mice, rats, raccoons, possums, groundhogs. Um, I think for my area, roughly, that sums it up. There's others, I'm sure, and other areas that you need to look out for. But all of these animals will completely chew through something. So we need to have some general upkeep situations going on. Now, I will tell you, every time I put any kind of like a cake fertilizer in the garden, or not a granule, but like pellets, that night, the animals get in there. I don't just mean wild animals either. My dog is attracted to it. So we'll put like a, a high nitrogen pellet fertilizer in there. A lot of blood meal, probably some feather meal in there or something. And I'm, my dog's straight attracted to it. The cat will dig in it, you know, and then at night we'll come in in the next morning and we'll see where animals have dug into the ground and eaten it. So I simply just had to switch from that. On the subject of fertilizing too, my drip lines that come in, so you can see right up here where they come in and then go underground. A lot of times when I inject the fertilizer, they will come in and they will chew right up here. And a lot of times that's where my damage is. It's pretty rare that if my line is buried deep enough that they will dig down to the line. They will do it, but a lot of times they'll get deterred from it and they won't actually hit the line. But that spot right there is like a magnet. Boy, oh boy, is it frustrating. I'm, I'm here to tell you. It is just frustrating because then I've got to repair it and then I've got to keep them away and uh, you know, all that stuff. And so what we want to do is we want to try and eliminate them from even getting into our garden. Now, if you have a dog or a cat, that definitely helps as long as they're not the culprit. But what we've done this year, and I've got two different kinds of, and I'll show you, is I'm using, I think they're called like sonic repellents, audible repellents, and what they do, so I was blessed and a friend of mine actually had one and gave it to me, so it's solar powered, and it, el it emanates a high pitch frequency that certain animals can hear. And so this one just shoots out one direction, which I found the animals like to come from the woods, surprisingly enough and not only do they like to come from the woods but they usually start here at our compost pile now i know you're probably thinking well just cover your compost pile," which you would be correct but that's an incredible pain and we are just about to start ramping up our compost production which we're going to do a video about soon about how to speed it up or how i speed it up i should say so typically it's not that much of an issue but this year it'll bring it in but that seems to have worked. Now, since I'm over here, before I show you the other device, we do also have this solar powered floodlight. Now, there's kind of an issue with this. So here's a solar power floodlight here, and I did practice it on my cat where I wish she would walk through and set it off. And I have different uh, solar powered floodlights throughout my garden. I have one on top of the greenhouse, I've got that one over there, which does spread pretty far. And then I've got some in the wild garden over here, which I'll show you when I get over here. And they do work to an extent. So I've got one on this pole here and this pole here, and they actually do work. And I did turn this one. So when the last time I fertilized where we would just come straight in, but we also have this 
um, repellent too. And this one actually does a 360 degree, so it's got a sensor on this side. And if it's going off and the frequency is hurting yours, I do apologize. We've got one on this side and that side. This one's pretty nice because you can have it do a frequency for like raccoons and possums. You can have it do a frequency for deer and foxes and stuff like that. And then you can also have it where it's like a siren. I mean, like a, like almost like a car alarm. And it'll it'll light up and everything, which I, I had that on. It went off one night and woke me up. So we went on from that. But those seem to really help. I wasn't so sure about it, but they really do seem to help a lot. So we set those up in those key areas. Now that one, I do want to get more of the 360 ones because even though I'm protected, protected over here on this side and over here facing that way, we have all of this over here. And one day they're going to get smart and they're going to come out this way. So we want to get another 361 to put in the front here. And so anything that comes in the area, it will obviously scare it off. And that's what we want. Now the issue with the lights and even the audible ones is the animals can end up getting used to the position of it and they'll, they'll, they're smart. They'll figure a way around it. You don't have to do anything crazy, but what I would recommend is every once in a while just coming out and just changing the position of it. You may move it a couple feet this way. You may just spin it on its axis or something like that something to keep the animals guessing all the time. So the lights kind of, they lose their efficacy after a while because I can't really move them much. And truth be told, we use them to kind of navigate as we go to take care of the chickens and stuff like that at night, especially this time of year when it gets dark early. So that does help with that. But if you couple it all together, we're doing everything we can for the most part, minus putting up fences and stuff like that. But moving those sonic devices around, will help at one point I had some over by the bees and then I was getting things come straight through. As a matter of fact, let's go look at it. I'll show you. So for a while it was right here in this corner and you can see if we went all the way down the line, you can see where something has come and dug all the way on this back side of it. Even coming up here. You see that? That's just where an animal has come and dug into it. But when we put that sonic device there, we didn't have that issue. It immediately stopped. So that was a good indication like, hey, we knew that this was an issue. Last fall, we had planted our carrots and we fertilized with um, a pelleted fertilizer. It was some organic, I don't remember what it was, but it, as soon as you wet it, it would break down. It was great fertilizer, absolutely great. I loved it. But the raccoons got in there and they dug up the entire bed and they mix all of our carrot seeds around then our carrots germinated and we kind of had to just leave it a mess for the year and i didn't really want to do that so this is a great way to stop it and you, you need to put all of these things together in order to basically create i don't want to say an iron curtain let's call it a rusty iron curtain around your garden now, if I really wanted to, what I could do is I could come out here and set up a solar powered electric fence around the garden. It's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, my bee mentor uses it around his bees because he's got bears. I don't have bears here really that I know of. I haven't seen any yet or any sign, but you could put that up here and it's, it's kind of expensive, but and depending on how your garden is, it may work out for you and it is effective. So we could put, you know, a post periodically through, run the wires. You can buy an actual kit that has solar power. I think you can get like tractor supply or something like that. That's solar powered and put the correct amount of voltage through the wire. And you can ensure that if something gets hit by it, it's not gonna be back unless it's big. And even then it probably won't. But the idea is to scare them away. I don't really wanna cause pain. Um, I just want them gone. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to go crazy doing anything, but these, it really does help. And he seems, I mean, he said he's had stuff get into that solar fence, uh, solar electric fence, and then just kind of, they back off immediately. So that works out well. Um, any kind of audible device, you know, if you were getting really heavy pressure, 
You could do something as simple as putting a battery operated radio in your garden for the night. And they will think the animals, from what I understand, and I've done this for their or chickens, will think that it's people and they won't come around. So it doesn't have to be this super complicated process. All right, so this one's for the gentleman. And ladies, if you have, if your husband or your kids are there, especially your kids are gonna love this one. And it's kind of gross, but it does work. Urination. So peeing around your yard works, but there's a key to that. Animals will definitely go by the scent of urine, but the one thing you wanna do is you wanna pee high up, right? So it's like marking your territory. So if you mark your territory, let's say I come over here to this tree. I'm not saying I pee on this tree, but I wouldn't lean on it if I were you. Be right here. You can pee at the base or you can get the urine up here. And what that says is, oh, wait, there's a big animal that lives here when they come by because they're equating with where the urine is to how large the animal is. And that can help as well. Now you can buy urine, different flavors of it, I guess, the scents of it. I don't know, fox urine, coyote urine. You can buy all kinds of stuff and put around, but that's another way you can do it. And then I'm not saying just walk out there and chug water and get to peeing, but you know, sometimes if you gotta go, you gotta go. And this is what it is. And it's a proven method. So that's the big thing about keeping them away. Another thing is don't give them a reason to be here, okay? So your raccoons and possums and stuff, they don't eat greens. They don't eat the greens, right? So if we do what we can with the fertilizer, we adjust appropriately, which by the way, the blood meal has, I have not really had that much of an issue with using blood meal. That's why I'm continuing to use it, but they're not gonna come up and eat this plant right here, this Brussels sprouts. So that's a good thing, but what they will eat, when I pulled down my tomatoes, I had some green ones and they fell out in the yard. Now they will come and they will search those out. Take my word for it, they will start small and they will keep going and going and going and getting more and more and more until they clear up the whole area. And that's like with the compost pile. So if you eliminate that and you pick up around your garden, you pick up all the produce and you're not gonna have that issue. And what I mean by that is most people don't just let their produce fall on the ground, but let's face it, I'm sorry, I have to turn around the wind. We have a cold front coming through and it's crazy. It's 85 degrees right now. And it's gonna be 50 tomorrow as a high. As they come through, they, they are going to invariably find it. And then each animal comes and it gets bigger and bigger. And then what happens is like a lot of people, when you're, let's say you're just, you're harvesting cherry tomatoes are a classic. They get really fruited down and you can't keep up with them and they just fall into the ground pick those up and get them out of there. And then that will help eliminate the need for the animals to come clear it out for you. Now you can take that chance, but that's a big one. So we try to stay on top of it and we try to remove as much as I can. And I have to, after this video, I'm gonna pick up these tomatoes that I've seen because I'm now doing my final checks before the winter comes. Cause once this cold weather sets in, which again, for us, we're in the heartbreak zone and it's yo-yo season. So it's gonna go up and down but the animals are thin blooded like I am. They don't want to be cold at all. And they're going to look and they're going to find something and they're going to feed. And we need to stop that. Goodbye.